Alrighty, so we got a banger here. Alexa Grasso versus Macy Barber. So, Alexa Grasso coming up from straw weight, in my opinion, she's probably a little bit on the smaller side of flyweight, you know, just compared to the other uh, girls in the weight class. Uh, for Macy Barber, she also came up from straw weight. I, th I think she'll be a little bit bigger here. Um, but she's coming off her first L, you know, wasn't the best performance. She was losing even before the injury. Uh, but yeah, maybe that's a little bit of pressure off her shoulders. She seemed to put a lot of pressure on herself, calling herself, you know, wanted to be the youngest champion uh, in the UFC. And yeah, she just seemed to put a lot of pressure on herself uh, when she was only eight fights into her career. But maybe, you know, she might be a bit realistic about her goals and stuff like that now. Uh, here's to hoping. Uh, also, I'm happy that she changed gyms from Rufus Sport because, you know, uh, that gym just loves losing. Like, who they got? Uh, Woodley, Pettis, Sergio Pettis, uh, Anthony Pettis, Sergio Pettis, um, Ben Askren. <laughs> like, Felder loses a lot as well. Like, you know, they just don't have a good win rate recently. Um, and I like that they've changed. And Gerald Mearshard as well. You know, all these guys, they just lose a lot. Um, but yeah, we'll break down the striking of these two. All right, we'll break down Alexa Grasso first. Obviously comes in with that boxing heavy style coming from Mexico, uh, that kind of gym. Uh, she keeps a high guard, hands return to the face immediately, really technical boxing, really nice defensively. Uh, so everything at range is pretty much down the pipe, keeps it pretty simple, one, two, two, one, one, two, you know what I mean? Uh, so yeah, she will keep a lower stance uh, when she's versing wrestlers. Uh, yeah, you just notice that if you verse a wrestler, uh, when she versus a wrestler, uh, especially in the color of Spaza fight, which is a good example of it. Uh, but I'm not sure if she'll do it in this one, because Macy might use her wrestling in this one. Uh, but yeah, unsure, because Macy has a few options here. But, uh, Alexa, she's not afraid to exchange. Uh, she, you know, she's Mexican, she's, she's down to scrap, good chin. Uh, she, she will sit down on a two when a opponent closes distance, like a counter two, uh, which is pretty nice. And for Macy Barber, she is a southpaw, you know, fights in either stance, but most, mostly in southpaw. Uh, she will lean back with chin in her air, uh, sorry, she will lean back with chin in the air, uh, with her chin in the air to avoid strikes, which is just a big, big red flag. When diversing someone like Grasso, who's going to throw everything down the pipe, uh, and especially if she gets a read on that, that you're leaning back, she'll just extend that right hand. Uh, and then, yeah, it's it's not going to be pretty. Uh, and, her, you know, her head does get snapped back a few, a fair bit. You saw that in the JJ Aldridge fight. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, but in general, her hands are pretty loopy, pretty wild uh, for the most part. Her kicks, her kicks are really nice. Her kicks... Um, well, you know, they're all right. They, they can be a little slow on the retraction, but um, generally her kicking game is is pretty decent. It's better than a boxing, in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, with the with the kicks, you can leave her hands low as well. So it is open to be counted. And also her retraction is very slow, as we talked about before. So uh, it's, it's kind of a target to be counted there. And that's something Alexa will be looking at doing a lot during this fight. Uh, but where Macy Barber is really good is the clinch and also on the mat. Uh, so she'll get that Muay Thai plum clinch. Uh, she'll start throwing elbows, knees to the body. Uh, she's really strong from that position. And then once it hits the mat, she's got really aggressive ground and pound. I'm not too sure where her wrestling's at. You know, she trains with a lot of good people like Izzy Martinez, but uh, it's just never been tested on in the UFC uh, against any, like... Uh, opponents with good wrestling as well you know she could take down Hannah Cyphers but that doesn't really tell me anything um yeah just we'll see it in this fight because Alexa does have okay takedown defense um yeah it's okay it's it's definitely somewhere where she um she needs to improve on like it, it's um it's it's not good <laughs> yeah no nah, it's, it's it's not good uh I'm lying but uh yeah Alexa she will uh, scramble, she's pretty scrambly off bottom, uh, she's got pretty underrated be uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in my opinion, uh, she seems to have good understanding of like the positions, 
uh, and knows when to explode off bottom. Uh, it's she's semi hard to keep down, uh, but she will scramble. You know, init like uh, as soon as opponent initi initiates the clinch or goes for a takedown. Uh, but then after that initial scramble, she will kind of just accept bottom and uh, lock in her guard and start playing off her back. But yeah, that's just not ra rated too highly uh, by the judges these days. So that's a red flag. Uh, so how these guys win, uh, Alexa Grasso, good strike and defense. Uh, good fundamental boxing uh, for Macy Barber. Her clinch offense is really nice. Pretty much we already brushed all over this stuff, so I'm just speeding through it. Uh, also, she's got really nice killer instinct, uh, which is kind of rare for a WMMA fighter. Uh, she's got power as well. You can tell her opponents don't like getting hit by her. Um, Grasso is Mexican though, so you got to take that into consideration. Uh, yeah, they're just like really tough people. Um, seems like Grasso is pretty happy in a firefight, um, so I don't think it's going to affect her too much. Uh, but Macy seems to have good cardio, good pace as well. Uh, how these guys lose, so Alexa Grasso brushed on it before, she's got pretty poor takedown defense. Uh, she doesn't really have urgency to get back to her feet a lot of the time. You know, once she's uh, once she's locked that guard, she'll just immediately start looking for submissions off her back. And um, yeah, it's just kind of not what you want to see uh, when you have money on somebody. And then you know the judges aren't going to rate it too highly unless you get the submission off your back, which is quite rare because everyone in top position in the UFC is usually pretty um, adept with BJJ and being on top and just guarding submissions off bottom. They just don't catch people anymore <laughs> like that. Uh, but for Macy Barber, um, so how she loses, uh, her strike and defense isn't very good. Talked about before, you know, a lot of holes in there, uh, especially the straight punches, not very good. Her takedown defense isn't great either. You know, Roxanne Modafferi was taken... You know, Roxanne's a decent grappler, but, you know, she's uh, been taken down uh, in previous fights as well by uh, worse grapplers than Roxy as well. So it's just something that I noticed that I didn't really like when I was watching. Also, the fact that she keeps changing camps and coaches, because uh, every time you do that, you have to... You have to, you have to sink with that head coach um again so you know that takes time so it's just uh why does she keep doing that um but yeah pass to victory for these guys uh for macy baba uh don't give her the fight that she wants just kind of make it ugly pressure her clinch off and push her around i don't know just just make it gritty make it make it like a bar fight pretty much uh, and then look to ground uh, Alexa and then look for some control and then once you've got control after that initial scramble and she's kind of locked her guard then you can start looking for the short elbows on ground and pound uh, but also if she's going to be in orthodox and you're in southpaw uh, look for that body look at that uh, look for that head kick uh, especially the body kick uh, will be there because she'll be using that that high guard uh, for the most part really uh, for Alexa Grasso, uh, keep everything down the pipe. Really, just um, do as you do as you would. Uh, if she's gonna kick, try to extend on that on that two and try and sit down on it. Uh, so yeah, the the punches down the middle will be there all day, in my opinion. Uh, don't exchange, don't brawl. There's no real need. You have the advantage at distance. Uh, so if she does get you down, just look to get up off bottom. Try and scramble. Uh, when she's like trying to posture up and land some ground and pound because she will give you space on bottom. So once she gives you space, just look to immediately scramble up. All right, so how I see this one going. Uh, I see Grasso being the aggressor early, at least until uh, Macy Barber realizes she has to be the one going forward for her to be in this fight. Uh, and just when Grass is coming forward, I reckon she'll be clipping uh, Barber at a high rate. Uh, similar to the first one and a half rounds of uh, JJ Aldrich versus Macy Bubba. Uh, I think he'll play out the exact same. So it just depends if Macy is going to get in the front foot. That will give her the best chance uh, to win here. Uh, so Bubba, she'll have a bit of success on the feet, but I definitely um, I definitely give Grasso the upper hand uh, in the stand-up. 
So Macy, if she wants to clinch grapple, make it a dog fight, I think she has uh, a path to victory there, and she can definitely win using that kind of um, game plan. Uh, she's definitely capable of making those adjustments, but even then, you know, Grasso, she's really scrambly. She's she's good off her back. She's got good understanding of jiu-jitsu and um, just uh, scrambling positions. Uh, so I think Grasso, I think just Macy's going to have a hands full on this one. I think um, Grasso is probably going to win like 30-27, maybe 29-28. Uh, I just think Grasso will do enough to win here. And... Uh, we'll look at the betting lines. Alright, so... Where are we? Alright, here we are. Uh, so, yeah. Prediction is Grasso by decision. I wouldn't bet Grasso by decision, though. Like, it's, you know... It's not worth it. Just uh, stick with the money line. Uh, I'm expecting the money line to go up to, like, $1.80. Probably max. That's what it will go up to. I was expecting Barber to be a favourite, to be honest. I was, yeah, I, I wasn't expecting Grasso to be this much of a favourite. Uh, but I do think she wins about 65% of the time, which means if you can get anything over 160 on Barber, I mean on a Grasso, then I'd probably recommend taking that. Uh, $1.75, if you don't want to wait around, just uh, just jump on that. I think that's a good bet. Uh, but yeah, I'll be doing that. I'm just kind of waiting for the line to go up a tiny bit and then I'll jump on.